So while I'm here, the calcium reactor could use some new media, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen the screws, take the cap off, and uh, put some new media inside there. Welcome back to part two of the 500 gallon reef system chiller repair. While Scott works on modifying the chiller's plumbing lines, I'm gonna go ahead and replenish the calcareous media in the calcium reactor. As over the last year, it's dissolved about 30% of that, which is now part of the growing corals inside the aquarium. I'm gonna go ahead and top off the reservoir with some system water and with a touch of the button on the Apex app on my phone I can start the reactor back up and running. So he's got the uh, return side trimmed out or cut out a little bit and we've got the calcium reactor back up and running. The UV is in place. Uh, the UV unit is now in position and the uh, inlet and outlet portion of the chiller is connected directly to the chiller so the discharge of the pump, the gold unit down there, comes up off the pump, makes a single 90 and goes straight into the chiller barrel, comes out of the chiller barrel a 90, another 90 into the UV sterilizer, and this will now drop down to the area that he just um, uh, cut out. Uh, previously, we went through this whole convoluted process of a uh, some kind of a canister filter, which is now completely out of the system, so our return line or return pump back into uh, the system should be a much improved flow. Yeah, only one minor issue that's going to be fun with the plumbing is the guy that plumbed this thing doesn't have the line uh, going back to the tank at a right angle, so it's going to be kind of fun trying to figure out. Oh, I see that. That's where also that flex tube could come in handy. Yeah, if we don't need to use it, I'd rather not. I understand. So, you know, of course, we got 45s and and stuff, so we'll just see what we end up with here. Had to screw something. So, typical union fitting valve mistake. You glue the fitting onto the end of the pipe and you forgot to put the uh, coupler, on. coupler or the threaded collar on there. Well, with the other ones on the Aqua UV, it was no problem. It went right over the elbows. <laughs> so. I didn't even think about it because I figured it'd go right over. Yeah, so. well, it's not the first time it's happened. I've seen it happen numerous times. We'll get this over there. All right, you put down the camera. I need your help. So we had some extra fitting, so instead of uh, trying to cut it and recouple it, I'm just going to make a new one. Now, this time... Put the union fitting on there. Yes. And I'm going to run the camera while you do it. So that if so you forget it, if you forget it, we're going to catch you on camera. All right, where's the other fit? Got it that time. We didn't screw it up. So this is the uh, return from the UV that's going back down to the 
display the union ball valve. Yeah. All right, we're in the home stretch. Boy, does it look much better. And now that Scott has the circulation pumps lines connected, I can open up the valves on the underside of the tank to allow the air to escape so that the water pump can prime itself. Just tight. And with the chiller now repaired, I can remove the clamp-on fans from the top of the tank. Have you seen what's new from Santa Monica Filtration? It's the Surf Upflow Algae Scrubber. Designed to float in your tank or filter, the sealed LED module snugly sits over the high surface area growth compartment and along with strong aeration, encourages naturally occurring algae growth that effectively consumes nitrates and phosphates and noticeably eliminates unsightly algae problems. For more information, visit santa-monica.cc. Hello, my name is Jim Stein and I operate Aquarium Design and I offer aquarium sales, installation, supplies, livestock and aquarium maintenance in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Calabasas, and Malibu, California. I specialize in custom aquariums ranging from freshwater, saltwater fish, living coral reef, and jellyfish display systems. I've been involved professionally and at many levels within the aquarium industry since 1987, and have been in business for myself since 1999. I've worked for many people, and some for over 20 years now. My team can provide you with a unique range of aquarium systems ranging from rectangular in-wall to freestanding cylinders, bow fronts, and custom curved shapes. Additionally, we can offer a variety of aquascapes such as an artificial coral insert, coral skeleton decorations, custom-made branching rock structures, and themed environments such as this Jules Verne version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. With today's technology in energy efficient DC water pumps and LED lighting, operating costs are much lower. We can automate many of the maintenance features such as water replenishment, water changes, lighting schedule including moonlight lighting and even your general daily feedings. I can even install an app on your smartphone that will allow you to monitor, to be notified, to control and view your aquarium anywhere in the world. If you're looking for something truly unique, give me a call and let's discuss the possibilities of creating your aquatic dream. I'm knowledgeable, insured and very reliable. My name is Jim Stein and you can reach me at 805-241-7140. I look forward to helping you achieve your aquatic dream. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. All right, so the new pump is running. We just evacuated the air from it. And I am looking to see if there is a noticeable and obvious improvement in the water flow in the tank. So the refrigeration unit has been repaired. It's been replumbed. Um, the flow back into the tank, in my opinion, is not visually noticeable, but we do know that since all those convolutions as a result of that canister filter have been removed from the system, that it's gotta be better itself. Um, what we're working on right now 
apparently the uh, digital thermostat uh, for the refrigeration unit has developed a little bit of an issue. I think we got water in it when we pulled out the other chiller, so it could be in the process of shorting out. Uh, we've still got another alternative if it turns out that that unit uh, ends up having a problem. And now that the chiller's been repaired and the new plumbing seems to be drip free and running properly, I can now reposition the lids back on top of the tank and wipe down the face of the tank and see if Scott has solved the digital thermostat issue. But first... So now that the lights have been on in the tank for a little while, the corals have uh, opened up and you can see just really how well the tank is actually doing. Uh, here's that brain coral I mentioned earlier. You can see on the top it's uh, spreading over onto the rock itself. Uh, the cup coral uh, or pagoda is doing real well. Uh, the leathers are in the process of opening. The hammers are already starting to open. That uh, capricornus is doing real well. There's a, a nice SPS coral that's grown an entirely new branch. That there is Duncan's coral, and it was probably originally six individual polyps, which has now grown into an entire uh, bush, uh, I guess I would call it. So this is the Rainco digital controller for the refrigeration unit, and I suspect what's happened was when we pulled the refrigeration unit out, this was sitting on or below it, and uh, as the chiller came out, all of that water drained, and unfortunately, portion of that water ended up going inside the uh, thermostat and I tell you electronics just don't do real well with water in particular salt water uh, Scott has uh, attempted to blow it out and kind of tried to resurrect it but there still seems to be some sort of a issue with the unit um, so that's not necessarily going to prohibit us from finishing the job uh, not only do we have um, the apex but we don't really want to plug the chiller directly into the apex because it draws so much amperage like eight or nine watts uh, or amps I should say uh, and that could potentially overwhelm it so there is this unit here called a Zantec uh, and it's a basically a relay switch so it interfaces between the apex system and the chiller and so then we could use this allowing the uh, apex to um, control the actual temperature as opposed to being the backup for it. Yeah, the Zantec basically takes any loads, so the chiller technically is only triggered by a 12 volt AC adapter. That's what's running on the apex or the load that's on the apex and where the Zantec is plugged directly into the wall outlet. So the load is coming directly from the wall outlet as opposed to the apex energy bar and all the energy bar is doing is controlling the 12 volt AC adapter which triggers the Zantec. All right, so uh, we're pretty much done. We've got all the plumbing reworked for the chiller. Um, and uh, in the process, we've obviously cleared up a lot of extra fittings and, and mess from the original plumbing. Uh, furthermore, we've made it much easier to service both the UV and the chiller, um, should you ever need to work on that chiller again. Um, we did have to uh, pull the Ranko. We have a new Ranko coming. And in the meantime, we're utilizing the Zantec um, relay outlet connected to the apex as primary control over the chiller as opposed to where it was before where the apex was a fail safe. So that's just temporary and uh, you know in the meantime um, it'll run just fine off the apex running uh, through the Zantec with no load on the apex itself. And next week when Jim comes we'll hook the Zantec up, eliminate the extension cords that we're using to run to the chiller now and everything will be gold. Until then Keep moving forward. So much better. Jim. I was just glancing down there thinking the same thing. <laughs>